Hello and welcome to the first episode for Season 3 of Mashup. I'm Scott. And I'm Ariel. This week on Mashup, we take a look at the art of creating figurines. Aria, we've got a pretty exciting episode lined up. Yeah, we sure do. We have a jam-packed show, and I don't even know if we can fit it into the first episode. We'll try. But I think we should introduce ourselves first. Well, I'm Scott, and I'm talking to you right now. And here yeah. is Ariel, and mm. she's an actress who is a killer at all accents. Oh, uh, thanks, Scott. Now, what should we start with, Jamaican or maybe Irish? Very funny. I hear you're good at Taekwondo. Help I can. I know. Well, yeah. Let's hear an accent first, and then we'll see some Taekwondo. Our first story tonight is about mini figurine dudes. Mini figurine dudes. Yeah, well, what would you call them? Well, let's find out. Fantasy and Warhammer 40,000 are two tabletop games and hobbies created by Games Workshop set in a fantasy and sci-fi world. It is also played by thousands of people all around the world. The hobby Warhammer is broken up into a couple of pieces, the two main of which being the painting and gaming side. So let's have a chat to some of the gamers and painters to see what the hobby is actually about. I'm Damien, I'm the manager of the Games Workshop Preston here. Uh, what we do at Games Workshop is we uh, buy, build, paint and then play with uh, miniature soldiers in a hobby called Tabletop Wargaming. started this hobby, the main thing I really liked about it was the painting side of it. I loved just building and creating it and seeing it all come to life bit by bit. Uh, days and weeks of months worth of effort all just kind of culminating in a, in a great project that's really uh, an aspect of myself and something I'm really proud of. Um, but the more I do it, the more I think that there's so many elements of it which are my favourite. Like I love playing the game and seeing really unlikely, impossibly heroic things occur. I love reading the background and, and learning about these characters and who they are and their motivations. Like there's so many parts of it that I'm just all about and I really like sharing that with other people. So I guess my favourite part of it now is getting other people excited about it. play people in the store because I spend a lot of time at the one store so I know a lot of the people here. A lot of time you know I practice games against the people that just hang around in the store and the people that I know and um, after that every once in a while I uh, usually will attend a tournament to play some new people, um, have a bit of fun and play some kinds of games I haven't played before. I just sort of love um, getting an army up. Just I love I love seeing an army all done, unified. Yeah, all, all that jazz. Oh, so they're called Warhammers. Yes, and did you know that each Warhammer is only 28 millimeters tall, and the average game can take up to three hours to play. Wow, that's a piece of information I could have gone my entire life not needing to know. Well, now you do. Mm. Ariel, I'm wondering, have you ever been to one of those places that offers the full body workout? I'm a huge fan of the full body workout. What about you, Scott? As long as I can do it from my couch. <laughs> well, anyway, here's how you can work out while having fun and meeting new people. That was fantastic. It was a great workout. Fantastic workout, really. Well, oh, that was tough. Well, I like tough though, sir. It was good. It was tough. Very tough. Oh, it was actually hard work. Yeah, really hard. But enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, a bit of a challenge. A lot of a challenge, actually. Anything, anything that was good was things that tested me out that I've never been tested before. So, yeah, the ones with the water were the best. Run over, 
Give it money. Well, I, I really like the pit. Actually, the pit was good because it's a real all-over workout. So I actually felt like I was doing everything from my legs through my core. I really, I really like the sand pit. If I could speak about anything, I'd be the sand pit so far. And it's very different because generally I work out just in the gym on weights, as well as my aerobic workouts, which are running, riding, and so on. I really thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, the first section that we did because that was really different from what I'm used to doing. Being in with a group of younger guys as well and girls, it really challenged me to keep up as well. So it took me to a little bit of an extreme. You come up here and it's really nice and you get lulled into a false sense of security and then all of a sudden they come and give you a kick in the arm. I felt, I felt like I probably deserve a rest. Exactly, downhills, uphills, over potholes, it's excellent. Very difficult. The one in the sand pit, very hard. The toughest um, was probably the rope. The rope climb. Yeah, the rope climb, yeah, that was pretty That was pretty hard. And then the run. Once you thought you were done, you had to run. So just intense two minute efforts on the rope, climb, and then down, and it wasn't just climbing up, but it was coming down again, which I like. You know, the team here as well made sure that I knew what I was doing and everything was safe, it was wonderful. Because not many people do that. And I think it would be a good thing for teams to help build teams as well. It was really well organised so that, you, you know, with the team approach, and I think anyone who wanted to bring a team here and do some team building as well as some fitness work, ideal. The thing was challenging in all aspects. I'll definitely tell my mates to come up here. There were, there were times here I thought, oh, I can't run up that half hill, that's it, it's over. But for some reason, you know, some words coming from the trainers and I guess even your team members and other people, you sort of tend to do that a bit more. So out of all that, what looks the hardest? Um, probably the, the handheld rope things. That's See, good. to me that looks fine, but for the love of God, I would not want to do that sort of barbed wire crawling. I don't know, it's, it gives you incentive to stay low. I think it gives you an incentive not to do the course. <laughs> oh, it looks like fun. We'll be right back after these things, commonly known as commercials. Welcome back to Mashup, the show that showcases Melbourne. So we've taken a look at Warhammer figures, a personal fitness boot camp, and also had some laughs, but what's next? What's up next, you say? None other than a Q&A between Ariel and I. Now, we're going to test each other's knowledge and see how each other goes. So, don't look, you're cheating. I'm going to start off. Ariel, this one's for you. Okay. What is the national emblem of Canada? A maple leaf? Yes, it is. I was about to say, think of maple okay, okay. syrup, but that would have given it away. Your turn. Oh, okay. Whose roles have included Alison in the 2008 film Yes Man and Jess in the US TV series New Girl? Oh my god, I have no clue whatsoever. Really? No clue. Oh, uh, Zoe Deschanel. I knew you knew that one. I have cheated. What? Okay, next one for you. Free Willy. Now, if you don't get this, there's something wrong. <laughs> Free Willy is what kind of animal? A whale. He's a frog. Wrong. You fail. That wasn't funny. I was right. Um, what was the name of the Korean rapper who hit the top of the UK charts in October 2012? Can I just say Psy? Psy. With, with his huge Korean hit, rapper, Psy. Gangnam Style. Psy. It's still Psy. Yeah. You're correct. Okay, you go. Answer. Okay, as a last question for you, or maybe second last. I'm going to win. Which animals are featured on the 20 cent coin? Uh, well, a kangaroo. Yes. An emu. Mm -hmm. One more. One more. And Native Australian animals. There's not that many of them. A platypus. Boom, boom, boom. Got Good right. work. Okay. okay, now for me. Back to me. Okay, okay. Is this my last question? Yes, it okay. is. Which performer hit the news in March 2013 after arriving on the stage at the O2 Arena almost two hours late for his own concert? Okay, so it's an, I know it's a him. What are my options? Do I have an A, B, or C? Okay, okay. Sure, okay. Sure. A. Yes. Kanye West. No. B. Lauren Hill. C. No, that's a woman. <laughs> oh damn, it's a girl. Yeah. Right. Anyway, C. Justin Bieber. Okay, by default, I'm going to go for Justin Bieber. Okay. Okay. Now my last question for you, which I'm actually making up. 
Uh oh. Are you in a choir? No, I'm not actually. I'm, I'm a bit shy with my singing voice, but we do have a segment on the beautiful choir called Saturday Night. Live. Live yes, choir. Yes, we do. Not bad. Um, and they're really beautiful. Check it out. St. Francis Parish, Mill Park. This is the Saturday Night Live Choir. For over 14 years, the Saturday Night Live Choir has been active in their participation for services to the church, as well as for weddings and other special occasions. The Saturday Night Live Choir started uh, way back 14 years ago, the year 2000. We interviewed a few choir members to tell us a little bit about the choir. So what's your role in the choir? As a leader of the choir, I make sure that everybody is enjoying what they're doing and committing themselves serving our parish, especially uh, St. Francis. Uh, I sing in the choir, so I really enjoy singing. Before joining the choir, because um, I used to go between different choirs, sorry, different masses, and um, there's obviously the, the ones on the Saturday and the one on the Sunday. And the ones that I mo the one the choir that I most enjoy listening to was the Saturday choir. Uh, I am the pianist of uh, the Saturday Night Life Choir. And uh, I've been part of the choir for around eight years. So basically since the age of t 10. Could you tell us a little bit about your choir members or what's it like working with the choir? It's been, yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful actually. Because um, obviously we've got um, uh, Victor. He's like our, um, the leader of our choir. He's very, you know, very warm, open-hearted person. He reaches out to each member. So when I first came in, he was very, you know, welcoming and encouraged me to, you know, try out new things as well. And there's obviously, there's um, Matt, uh, who's our conductor, and he pretty much mold, molds each person um, together to the choir. So it produces really wonderful sound each week. And obviously the talented musicians as well. I enjoy how everyone's so committed and uh, attends all the rehearsals and the masses every week. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to join these people when playing music and uh, to serve God. We share our experiences as a musician and singers, and we do experience some difficulties, but we stick around and we state our, you know, our experiences and share together as a, as a group. So that's why uh, Saturday Night Live Choir still exists in our Paris for 14 years. Do you find the choir enjoyable? I really like it. <laughs> I really, really enjoy our choir. Saturday Night Live Choir is so much uh, dynamic and vibrant. I can't really define that, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure. This is Saturday Night Live Choir. God bless. <laughs> the Saturday Night Live Choir seems like they have such a, an incredible community. You should join. Perhaps, perhaps. They all seem really lovely people. Mm. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Mashup. Now it's time to take a look into an up-and-coming DJ. Ooh, I love DJs. What's this one like? Well, let's find out. Hey, my name is Adam the Bull. My DJ name is the Bull. Um, I've been DJing for about four or five years. I'm working on, at the moment, a minimal remix of a song called Gangsta by, I think, Rexet and Rocker Animal. I'm not going to enter the competition, I just wanted to have a crack at a minimal song because I think the, vo the vocals are pretty cool. I use FL Studio and I've been producing for about a year. 
Usually when I um, make a track, I usually start off with a kick and bass line because I like to think that the kick and bass line is like the basis of a track, it's kind of like the glue that holds everything together. And from, from there, I just like, wherever the flow takes me, I just go from there. Like there's no actual process of steps that I take. The artist that has probably influenced me the most would have to be Dead Mouse because he is um, what predominantly got me into EDM. His album, I think it's four times four equals twelve, was the first EDM album that like I started like I listened to. I don't really have a direct influence from any artist in particular. Like I said, I like to take bits and pieces from everybody and kind of like put my own twist on things. I've been like on and off with producing on FL Studio for a couple of years. Basically, I just learnt through YouTube tutorials, just trial and error. And um, a mate of mine, Dean Foster, has been producing for a while and he had a, he had a couple of lessons and he's taught me a, a fair few things. Me and him have done two collabs. We've got a remix of Bon Jovi's track, It's My Life, and we've got an original track called Rockstar. If you would like to follow me on SoundCloud, my SoundCloud is soundcloud.com forward slash D-A underscore B-U-L-L, that's the ball. Basically my advice for anyone wanting to start DJing and producing would be to just keep at it, you know, like, don't give up, just keep on going, learn from your mistakes, you know, you, uh, YouTube tutorials are a lot of help when it comes to mixing and producing, and yeah, just keep at it. Wow, his music is really good. I wonder if he has any CDs I could buy. I'm sure he would. He seems really good. We'll have to look him out, look out for him in the future. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's all we have time for tonight. But remember, you can find us at the same place at the same time right here next week. But finally, to take us out, we have Marvic Fox with their new song, Atlantic Mode. Good night. Mm -hmm.